Hello, hello. All right, let's get my video going. Uh, Ellie or Eli? Your your voice, Eli. Your your mic is muted. Thank you for that reminder. I appreciate that. How's it going? Good, good. Awesome. So, David, give me your last name pronunciation. What's the best way to come at that? Pacerik. Pacerik. Pacerik, yeah. Okay. I'm going to try sharing screen here. Perfect. Let's see what happens here. Window. Uh, share this. Share. Ah, look at that. A thing of beauty. That looks really good. Excellent. So in, in the presentation, um, I've got a couple of offers. One is um, a free website audit, if anybody's mm -hmm. interested. Uh, so I'm going to ask people like if they want uh, to go and do that and, and request the, the audit um, during the webinar. Um, and I have an ebook, so like if we can send out an email uh, afterwards or, or if you can send out an email with the PDF, I can shoot that over to you or something like that. Yeah, totally. If it, basically, if I get a little blurb with like, here's the links and the copy um, sometime by the end of today, I'll make sure that goes in tomorrow along with the video. And if there's awesome. any other links with special offers, include that there and I'll make sure that gets out to everyone who registered. Fantastic. Fantastic. The other cool. thing is I'm recording this session with basically the idea that we will share the video out with everyone after the fact. And if you are comfortable sharing slides, send that over my way. And if that's not what you want to do, that's fine as well. Um, yeah, I could totally do that. Um, so I think when I was talking with Ben, uh, we were talking about um, the mighty NPO platform mm -hmm. uh, that we put together. It's muting and unmuting by itself. I am it's noticing weird. that too. Um, yes, something is afoot. Um, we'll just need to be. You're right. It did it again. Okay. I'm going to refresh my browser window and rejoin and see if that helps us out. Okay. It was doing it to me also. Yeah. You may want to do the same just to see okay. what's going on. All right. So let's refresh here. Hi everybody, who's who is here? Let's see. Got Chuck and Colleen and Holly and Ian and Manisha and Tiago. And obviously Eli's here. I am indeed. And the mic seems to be connecting. Always a miracle. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't mute us. <laughs> <laughs> that will make me grumpy if it happens again. Um, so let's cross our fingers. Tech is amazing, right? <laughs> when it works. When it works, that's the caveat. Well, that is always the thing. You know, and the more it works mostly reliably, but doesn't that 5% of the time, the more it'll drive us crazy. So at the beginning, I'm like, I don't trust it to work. I don't expect it to work. No problem if it breaks. But eventually I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I want it to work because it always works. I, I build my life around it. Especially the last three years, right? <laughs> Lord love a duck. That is the truth. Um, but on the other hand, an advantage of that is we get to do this fun thing, bringing together multiple communities where you get to come in, the TechSoup Connect Ontario team gets to come in, we get to bring in the Western Canada group here. So that's a bit of a, de a delight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was just thinking about something. Oh, what was it? Totally escaped me. Oh, I don't remember what it was. Something about tech and not connecting and then it connecting and all that. I was, um, uh, I guess it's, people are here. They're listening to us, right? They are here. We've okay. got 13 people. We are in a public space here. Um, so, which is Perfect. just my good reminder to everyone that, hey, we're going to start up probably about two minutes after the top of the hour. We are going to record this session. So if you miss something if you are too busy to take notes right now 
you'll have the video, which you can always review later. Um, and I will also send over an email probably by tomorrow morning with some of the key links and resources shared uh, by David here today. So in the meantime, sit tight, everyone. Grab yourself a glass of water. Give your dog a squeeze. And, uh, and we'll start up pretty soon. Um, in the meantime, as we get into there, I would love you to just pop into the chat, our, my first 15 arrivals, and just say, hey, where are you from? What organization are you representing? I'd love to get a sense of who's here in the room, and I'll model that out for you. Check this out. Also, this is going to be our fierce fight to see who's got bigger representation, the Central Canadians or the West Canadians. We got an Edmonton here. Colleen, I'm going to take you as a West. Nice. Welcome, Kim and Holly. Good to have you here. We got an Islander and someone from the nation's capital. Thank you both for being with us. We've got a friend coming in from Kamloops. I'm wondering if they are also getting crushed by the snow or whether they get to feel smug about their lives today. We've got Laura Lynn coming in here from one of our long-term like champions and advocates, Volunteer BC. We're always really grateful for all of your support through social media and other channels. Thank you so much for helping us bring more people into these events. Welcome, Ian from Toronto. Good to have you here. Oh, and Jessica coming all the way from Halifax. You know, another ocean friend. Good to have you here too. And our first Yankee. Glad to have you here. Chuck coming in from just outside of Philly. Yes, this has largely been a Canadian space, but, but there's room for you, you here as there is for you, Katie, as well. Perfect. And I'm glad to have you here, Keely, coming in from the uh, BC Technology for Learning Society. Another real champion and advocate for the work we've done. They've often been the sponsor um, and basically the presenting nonprofit arm when we've done our conferences in the past. So great to have them here. And see, we're now up to 27. For those who have just arrived, just a reminder to say, we'll start up probably in about two minutes, just a bit after the top of the hour. In the meantime, join everyone else in uh, just giving us a little, little shout out here in the chat. And I'd love to get a sense of who we've got here with us today. so great to see so many people here that are like interested in uplifting their organizations and helping their communities it's uh, it's awesome nice i see we've just also got sheila and sherry both drop in um delighted to have them here i believe we're bringing them into some of our core team um so they'll be contributing some event ideas over the next six months um so stay tuned for that lots of good stuff coming soon Oh, wow. Cork, Ireland. All right. You might win the, the glamorous award here today, today Pietro. Um, thanks so much for joining us for your evening. And I see we also have Lynn Williams popping in from Philly. Uh, Lynn is actually one of our past presenters um, and a real LinkedIn expert. So if you have not yet connected and followed link Lynn Williams on LinkedIn, you'd better get on that. And I'm sure Lynn will drop a link into the chat so you can get a great sense of some of the best practices she's been sharing. So we're gonna start up again in about 30 seconds. So this is your final chance to like stretch out, get ready for a little bit of learning. Um, and we'll start in with an intro. Um, so that will be basically the flow, David. We'll do a quick intro, that'll be me. I'll then tell everyone about how great you are. And then we'll pass the baton over to you and you'll prove just how right I was about how great you are. 
Um, we've got a full hour here with us today. You get to spend that time as you wish, whether that's going to be all straight up in presentation mode or whether you want to bring some Q&A into the mix. We will be collecting questions in the chat through the course of today's event. And I'll throw those at you as appropriate through the course of the event, but keep most of them, I think, either towards the end or for a natural midpoint break. All right, we're at 43. Let's say that's quorum, but I know more people are going to keep on stumbling in. So let me give a quick intro so we can start this event off. There, does that look as slidey as it should? Perfect. Perfect. Well then, welcome friends to another TechSoup Connect Western Canada slash or X Ontario collab event. This is a place for nonprofits, techies, digital marketers to all get together to gossip and scheme and learn. So my name's Eli. I'm one of your local Tech for Good hosts. Um, and we're all part of this program called TechSoup Connect at TechSoup. You're going to learn a whole bunch more about TechSoup in just a moment. It's a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use technology. Um, and as you already heard, two chapters came together for this event, but there's actually chapters all over the world from North Carolina to the UK to Botswana. Name a place, there's probably a group of volunteers coming together to create an experience like this one. <clears throat> so we're coming from a couple different places, but let me start with a land acknowledgement for where I'm coming from. I'm here in Vancouver, Canada, and that's the traditional unceded territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, um, oh my gosh, I have this blank. And Musqueam, ah, thank you. My apologies, everyone, people. Um, and when I say, unceded, what I mean there is it meant basically it's stolen land. And what do we do with stolen land? We return it. So that's one of the things we all need to work hard on as a society to create those opportunities. We have values as a community. We welcome everyone. We put our community first because we're here to support each other. We're here to build stronger nonprofits and technology is one of those tools we use. We invite your participation. We know that you have things to learn and contribute. So get into that chat window, ask questions. But last thing, we treat each other with kindness and respect. So that means before you ask that question, before you make that comment, take a moment and just say, am I bringing my kindest and most empathetic self into that interaction? And as a group of volunteers, we need your help. Right now, the core team is Ben Abel and myself. You'll see him here in chat as well. Um, but we're always looking to grow the team. We want new event producers, people who can work with us on the marketing, people who want to be in the chat moderator team, people who want to do notes. If you want to get involved, drop something into the chat and we will follow up. I would love to bring you into the core team of volunteers. As I said, this is a project supported by TechSoup. TechSoup connects you with software, hardware, projectors, all the good stuff you need to focus on your mission. And we do that by partnering with a whole bunch of technology companies, everywhere from Microsoft to Zoom to Adobe to GrantStation to Google. Before you spend any money on technology, just take a moment and say, are they already in the TechSoup catalog? Is there a discount or free offering in there? Because this is what it could look like. I've created a pretend nonprofit with 10 staff and created a software bundle for them. And as you can see, working through TechSoup with your free account, there can be some pretty ridiculously good savings available. So if you don't yet have a TechSoup account, get on it. As I say, it's free. It's worth your time. There are also, of course, all kinds of great events like this one available uh, for you. So uh, go register. They're free and they're fun. 
But now let's get me out of the way and talk about our guest presenter. So today the topic is maximizing your website for nonprofit success. And as our guest expert, we've got from WOW Digital, David Pissarek. So David is an experienced web and solutions architect, um, a designer and a project management ma manager. He has worked with a variety of clients in the education, nonprofit, political, healthcare, and government sectors. So he probably knows an organization much like yours. Um, and he's a member of the Graphic Designers of Canada. David has taught web design and development um, and has also developed a curriculum for training around those skills. Um, he's also, of course, built out this platform that helps small, medium nonprofits solve their website challenges. And so with that, I'm going to get out of the way. And ladies and gentlemen, give me some clap emojis for David. Hi, everybody. So great and grateful to be here with you and helping and inspiring. And hopefully coming out of this, you're going to walk away going, oh my, we need to do this today, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to be talking about some case studies as we go through today. So super, super excited. Um, and, you know, because we all love slide decks, uh, I've got another one. So let me just share my screen here. There we go. Oh, we got some more people coming in just in time. We're at 59. That's awesome. Can you see this, everybody? This is good. Okay. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, in today's presentation, I'm going to be speaking to you about why you need to optimize your nonprofit's website and the great benefits that it has to offer. I'm going to cover three shifts. Uh, that you need to make in your nonprofit or your charity or your community group um, to make this a success. So let's hop in here. So in terms of problems, these are the top three that our clients come to us with, and it'll probably resonate with you. So the first one is that your website doesn't really look or, you know, quote unquote, feel at the level or quality of your organization's mission. You need to understand how you can save time on your website management so that you can focus on your other priorities. The website is probably underperforming. You might have low traffic. You might not even know how much traffic you've got, um, as well as a lack of engagement with potential donors or volunteers. So by the end of today, these are my promises to you. You're going to learn some quick visual fixes to modernize your website, your current design trends, and we're going to talk a little bit about responsive design. I'm going to talk about solutions to make your life easier when you're managing your website. And lastly, how to leverage Google in your favor and place appropriate call to action, CTAs, and the importance of analytics. So as I go through the presentation, I want you to think about how much time you spend in your process for making updates to your website. I want you to think about how up-to-date your website is for your organization as of today. I want you to think about how your website works for you as a team member to get you donations and volunteers and to help you win grants and help you communicate your organization's mission to potential board members. There's so many things that your website should be doing for you. How easy is it for you to even go and use and navigate and find information that you're looking for? Think about the type of content that you publish to the website and how much traffic you get. Um, now, if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them into chat. I'm gonna to try to keep my eye on it. Um, I'm going to ask some questions. So this is going to be also a little bit of an interactive uh, session today as well. So keep the chat open. And here we go. On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you about the results that you get from your website? So 10 is the highest. You're like super happy. So just go in and chat and just drop some numbers in. Three, three, four. Oh, Lynn and Aaron, they're feeling pretty good. Seven and an eight, nine, five. Cool. Cool. Laura's at a four. Ian, no worries. You don't have a website yet. That's okay. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on today as well. Awesome. Cool. So some of you are kind of like feeling eh, so, so maybe a little kind of mediocre, maybe like a D or a C kind of grade. <laughs> Monika's the happiest. Awesome. All right. So what I want you to think about is how 
would you like your website to actually serve your organization? Where do you want your website to be? And what we're going to do, uh, if you stick around to the end here, everybody that's coming, we're going to send out an email tomorrow with an ebook. And uh, it's going to have three, it's called actually three simple words to increase your donations by 20%. So you can take the learnings and lessons from that. It's based on psychology. Uh, you can implement it in your messaging and over you know, the next couple of months, you'll be able to see uh, growth in terms of donations coming into your organization. We're going to do some live Q&A uh, as well. I've got a big announcement kind of coming like right at the end. So stick around. You're not going to want to miss that. So hi, I'm David Paseric. I'm the CEO. I like to call myself the Chief Digital Aficionado uh, of WOW Digital Incorporated. We work with Canadian nonprofits and charities who are looking for an improved online presence. I have over 30 years of web design, marketing, and branding experience with 20 of those years in nonprofits uh, doing web marketing and branding. I've been interviewed in a number of nonprofit podcasts, and I've even been cited in a PhD dissertation. Who knew? I taught web design and programming at two Ontario full-time uh, colleges. Um, I was the lead developer in the dot-com boom of 1999, where after seven weeks of working, uh, we raised a million dollars in capital and went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, it was absolutely crazy. Um, I worked full-time in nonprofits from 2000 to 2016 when I founded WOW Digital. We're in our seventh year and we've completed over 250 projects for nonprofits, NGOs, and charities. My team and I have also evaluated over 400 Canadian nonprofit, charity, and NGO uh, charity, NGO, and foundation websites. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. We've got some learnings from that. And finally, in January 2021, so just over two years ago, I started a podcast. It's called the Nonprofit Digital Success Podcast. It's available on nine or 10 different platforms. Um, highly recommend you go and check it out. Uh, I'm not saying that because I just want more listeners. There's actually some really great value uh, in there as well. Now, the question you're probably asking or maybe asking is, why am I even here talking to you? Well, this is exactly what it is, all right? My mission is to empower 5,000 nonprofits to positively impact a million lives through innovative digital solutions. At my agency, one of our core values is empowerment via education, and that's exactly why I'm here. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, are you ready to get into this and learn what we can do? Uh, type yes in the chat. And we are going to steamroll forward and get through this. Ian's ready. Aaron and Jason. Uh, Eli's like, bring it on. <laughs> ben is, yeah, you're right. This is awesome. I agree. Yes, 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 yes. Lots of yeses. Awesome. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So these are just some of the organizations we've helped in the past couple of years. Thank you for joining. I know you're busy. I, I Like I said, I worked in nonprofits for about 16 years. I understand how crazy and hectic it can be, but it's awesome that you've decided to come and take some time out of your super busy schedules to, uh, to get clear on why we're here. And that's to talk about how to get better results out of your website. So I'm gonna show you why your website should be a key part of telling your nonprofit story. And I'm also gonna show you how you can manage it without even touching any code and how you can uh, increase your reach and engage your visitors. You're likely aware that your website's a problem, Right, there were a lot of threes and fours and fives earlier on when I was asking, you know, how how are you feeling uh, about your site? So you might not know necessarily exactly what the problem is with your website, but you might think maybe your messaging is off or it's not communicating your organization's importance. And you say to yourself and maybe your colleagues, or your friends, we're not connecting with the people we want to connect with. Well, as I mentioned, we've done an audit of over 400 nonprofit and charity sites, so we're going to dive into those uh, in a couple of minutes. You're already stressed out. You probably have a million things to do and manage and you don't have the time to deal with, you know, quote unquote, the problem of your website. It's possible that you've got too many disconnected or different systems for managing your site. You might not have the time, probably don't even know where to start to, you know, take apart the giant web, pun intended, um, for of, of your site. So, uh, but you know that if you don't fix this problem, you're gonna risk losing donors and volunteers to other organizations. It's stressful, there isn't enough time in the day, 
to give the right amount of attention to the website or to properly review analytics and make updates proactively. The reality is, is that underneath all of this, the thing you're probably not really aware of or not willing to talk about is that you're missing an organizational digital strategy. Maybe your website was something you created seven, eight, nine years ago because everyone else has one and you knew you needed one too. Uh, if you haven't really done a deep dive on your website since before COVID, so three years ago, I would highly recommend that you kind of like jump in now and really start reviewing your site and making some changes to it uh, proactively. Um, possibly you went through this really painful RFP process. I've been on both sides of that when I was working at, uh, at the colleges and universities and at the hospital. I've been in the RFP seat on that side. I know how many hours it takes to put it together. Um, and from my agency side, I know how many hours it takes to actually respond to those and go through that whole process. So totally understand uh, the frustration that can come from it. Um, you know, you built a website and just kind of sat there. Maybe it takes too long to update the content. It's probably a really frustrating part of your day or your week or your month, um, but you know it needs to be better. Uh, so you don't have a strategy. That's why we're hanging out here today. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about all this. I'm gonna teach you how to overcome these problems at your organization. I'm gonna talk about exactly what you need to know in order to have a much more effective website for your nonprofit. So first thing I wanna do is talk to you about a client that we worked with and some of the things that we helped them achieve around this front, just so you know that it's possible for your nonprofit as well. So we worked with our client, COCA. They're the Council of Ontario Construction Associations. This is their old website and this is their new one. They had a number of different systems that were on the back end, and they didn't even know where all of their login details were. We helped them consolidate their platform into one clear back end control panel to organize and run their system online. We implemented a new content management system so anyone in their organization who has access, not just their web pro or designer, could be able to manage it. Anyone can go in there, they can add content. <clears throat> Pardon me. We provided them with training and they're saving three to four hours a month just by doing this consolidation and training. We're not even talking about messaging automation and all the other cool things that we can totally help you do and walk you through. Uh, but we're going to talk about those a little bit later. So just by consolidating their systems, they're developing a better digital strategy. They're saving hours a month so that they can work on their mission. So we're gonna talk about a couple of other organizations today and case studies, but I just want you to know that these problems are solvable. They're completely within your reach. This is just one example that you can maybe think of to start, um, I guess the gears moving on what you can do in your own organization. At the end of the day, you need to ask yourself a question. Do you wanna make a change and have a better functioning website for your organization? So by the end of today, that's what I want you to have answered. So as we go through, I want you to also think about these two other questions. And I'm gonna ask you to type in chat here, so get ready. If you could double the reach and the impact you have on your mission in the next 12 months, what would that do for you? Funding, Aaron, yes, for sure. Serve more clients, make the donors happy. Yes, I always say you need to run your nonprofit like a business. You need to have money coming in so that you can reinvest it so you can get more money coming in. Um, absolutely. Really increase the number of people that you help, for sure. Get your message out there, right? Increase the membership, that's awesome. Hit goals for reaching 500 nonprofit. Eli, that's awesome. In increased membership, funding and serve more members for sure, right? If you can spend less time dealing with some of these marketing headache issues that come up with websites because it's just easier to work with, absolutely focus your time and effort. Um, a lot of people are saying some very similar things in here. So, you know, this is, uh, this is really telling about what's going on. Um, now, what would you do with your time if you could save three or four hours, maybe a week in working with your website because it was just easier to work with?
I'll throw that into here as well. Maybe not even a week. Maybe what if you could save three or four hours a month? Making connections, finding members for sure. Maybe finding some grants that you can apply for. Right? Reviewing the content in your site. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Eli, good point about content. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on today about how important your content actually really is and what, uh, what it'll come with and how that will help your organization. All right. So later on today, I'm going to give you all an opportunity to sign up for a free nonprofit website digital audit. Um, and as we go through, if you think you want to dive deeper on this with me or my team at WOW Digital, and you'd love to look at, and you'd love for us to look at what your nonprofit's doing online, I'm going to give you some opportunity for that. So one of our core values, actually our first core value uh, at WOW Digital is to help first, and we would love to do that for you. So with that, let's hop in and get moving. So the first shift I'm going to cover, remember earlier I said there's three shifts. So the first one uh, is making your site look better so it can tell your story and engage users and donors. Your website is not just an online brochure or repository of information that you just keep dumping content into. So we found some consistent issues with the audit uh, of the 400 sites, and we're going to take a look at that in a moment. I've got some screenshots from their home pages, and this part always makes me a little bit nervous. I hope none of your sites uh, are, are in here, so um, eh, we can hope. If your site's in here, my apologies, it wasn't uh, intentional. All right, so here we go. Here's the first line. How do these websites feel to you? Right? How old do you think these sites are? To me, I've been doing this since 1991. So to me, these feel like 1995, 1996, right? They're old, right? They're dull, Ugh. right? Angie, for sure, 90s, 100%. Uh, Omar, uh, maybe your site belongs in the next uh, slide that comes up here. So let's take a look. Yeah, it's, it's content-based. There's no visual. There's, it's kind of it's boring, right? It looks like somebody just kind of like vomited a web page up. All right, so how about these? These are a few more, right? Do these remind you of sites maybe you've seen recently? Or does it remind you of your own site? If you don't wanna call yourself out, that's okay, but you can say it out loud to yourself. Right? These are better, but not great. These to me feel like they're around 2000 to 2005, something like that. Right? They feel kind of old, a little bit outdated, not really modern and trendy. All right, so let's take a look at what we've learned by going through these uh, sites here. So uh, you probably noticed many of the sites looked familiar, uh, very often an outdated look, which usually means that the content on the site is outdated. Many fail to offer value or even answer donor or volunteer questions. Many were not accessible friendly. If your website isn't accessible, then you're not serving your purpose for your community. Um, so quick uh, question here. Uh, does anybody here not know what uh, web accessibility is about? Just type in um, no, I guess, into the chat and uh, I'll explain what accessibility is. Okay. All right, so we've got a couple coming in. All right, so web accessibility. Um, I would imagine most people that are here uh, don't have any visual impairments. They can use a mouse and a keyboard totally fine, then they can browse the web. There are people that are blind that surf the web. So imagine closing your eyes, right, and trying to navigate a website. You can't see what you're clicking on. Um, or imagine maybe you have some color blindness or you're, you're visually uh, impaired in some way. So there's different things that we talk about in terms of accessibility. One of them is being able to use keyboard navigation so that you can like tab through and go through somebody's navigation uh, and that. Another is uh, a lot of people have an assistive technology on their device, whether it's their computer, tablet, or cell phone, uh, that's basically called a screen reader. It's kind of like a general term for this type of software. And what it does is as you're looking at a website, it'll read out the content of the website. 
the biggest issue is when it comes to images. How does it know what to say for the image, right? There's something called alt text, which can be applied. You can also put title text on it uh, or long description text rather. Um, and with that, you can tell the screen reader what to read out to the person who is using that software. Um, as an added benefit, if you improve the accessibility of your website, you're inherently improving your SEO worthiness in terms of Google's eyes. So if you have keywords that you can put in image descriptions where it's actually appropriate, remember that some people might have it read out to them. So it can't just be some random thing. Uh, you need to make sure that you've got the proper alt tag. So if you're using the keyword, Google will actually see that as extra content in your page and will start to rank you a little bit higher with that. So that's like super high level. The other side is contrast. So if you ha imagine having a yellow page with white text on it, it will be really hard to read that text. And so people that might have a visual impairment might find that you don't have enough contrast there and it could be a barrier to, to your content. So we can totally dive in on like web accessibility and all that. And that's actually something um, if you request the audit when, when we get to, uh, I guess the next slide there, um, you'll, uh, one of the things we look at is, is accessibility. Um, a lot of those sites, they didn't even have easy to find contact information, like a phone number or an email address. People are busy today, right? They're going online, they're searching, they're researching, they're looking at your organizations. They wanna know what makes your cause different and better or unique from another one. If you blend in with the others, if your site's confusing or frustrating, if you don't make it clear that you offer relevant services, then they're gonna leave and they're not gonna come back. So do you feel like your website needs a boost, but you're not quite sure what to do? All right, so I want you all to take some kind of action right now. Head over to wowdigital.com slash audit and request a free website audit. After you've submitted the form, type audit into chat. So I'll give everybody a minute or two here. Uh, it's a quick form, like name, website, URL, uh, that type of thing. And we will, uh, my team and I will get together and we'll run these um, uh, audits for you and we'll, uh, we'll give you those reports. So I'll give everybody a moment here to go and do that. So Eli, you, you asked a question uh, four minutes ago, according to the chat here, about if those websites would work as mobile first sites. Um, so those really old sites, they might, they might scale appropriately, but I would doubt it. A lot of them were built with tables and they don't actually like scale down properly for mobile devices. Right. Yeah. I definitely seen like, you know, when there's multiple columns, you're just like, well, how will that be prioritized in a mobile phone um, as you sort of shrink things down to a different screen? The other thing I'd love you to talk about when you have a moment is just talk about like CTAs, like, because you can say like, I have 15 CTAs on my website. Isn't that better maybe? Or, or maybe not. So just to help people navigate, how do you go through that prioritization to really be, be clear to people who visit your website, what's most important, what you really want them to do. Absolutely. So I, I actually have a, a slide about CTAs for sure. So, uh, and I talk about that uh, with regards to the content and making sure that you're getting people coming to your site and doing what you want them to do. So that is definitely totally coming up. Uh, sure. Yeah. Jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Aaron and Keely, awesome. Taking some action. Fantastic. All right. So as people are still um, going ahead and filling that out, I'm going to, uh, we're going to move along here. All right. So what I want to do is take a look at, uh, at another client and my slides are not moving. Why are they not moving? Weird. All right. There we go. Uh, so springboard services. It's important for your website to tell your story through your brand, your design, and the style of your content. It needs to be fast loading and easy to navigate. By the way, Google's algorithm takes a look at the page speed. So that's something to, uh, to consider as well. And think about the website from your user's perspective, not your own. Somebody told me uh, something last week. I was at a conference 
for uh, digital agency owners. And somebody said that they approached uh, the company that they were working with and the president was being uh, a little bit of a pain uh, to work with uh, and kept changing their mind about what they liked, what they didn't like. And she basically told her, the website isn't for you, right? It doesn't matter what you like. Is Will it resonate with your audience? Will it resonate with the people you want to connect with? And that's something to always make sure that you keep in mind. So what does this website look like to you? How does it make you feel? What kind of emotion does this give you, right? There's no real story happening here. It's text heavy. It looks like somebody just threw a bunch of clip art uh, into the middle of the page. It doesn't look like there's really any um, visual hierarchy to this. There kind of is, but, but not really. Um, when we went in and worked with Springboard, one of the things that we realized is that they bring groups of people together and they connect human beings and people are at the center of everything that they do. So look at the work that we created for them. What does this feel like to you? What kind of emotion does this give you? Right? This is how we turn their website into a visual storytelling medium for their organization. So let's take a look at another one here. I think everyone's been through this probably at least once, but imagine you find out about a charity or a nonprofit and you want to learn more about them. So you instinctively go to Google, you find them, you go to their website, and what you see is something kind of like this. Stunning, right? Well, no, not quite. I mean, this could have been in, in some of the slides uh, that I showed before. Uh, they have a great mission. They want to give grants to new projects to improve the quality of life for people, but they weren't going to get that message across with this look. Why would you feel com compelled to apply for this grant, volunteer, or even donate to this organization? Are they even still in business? I think their website says something about November 2019, right? So here's what we did for them. And it has a whole new ring to it, right? Imagery with people looking at the camera are scientifically proven to evoke a response. This goes back to, uh, you know, caveman days and early, uh, early human. Hey, David, um, just want to theory. double check that what we should be seeing right now. I'm still seeing the springboard slide. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go back here a bit. So here's springboard. Addison Foundation says, engage your visitors. Do you see that? No, I'm not. I'm still only seeing the tell your story. You may want to double check the screen share oh. and just see which, if it's just maybe stuck to that one tab. No, in the chat here, people are seeing them. So, I don't know. Everybody else seems to be okay. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's all, right. all me. My apologies. Keep going. No worries. No worries. Again, tech is awesome when it's working the way you want. <laughs> um. Yeah, so like instinctually, we like to look at people in their eyes, right? And it's that type of response that's important for your nonprofit to create a connection and make a compelling case for somebody to take action with your cause. How often do you load up a website on your phone while you're on the go or sitting on the couch or just going about your day? Certainly the last three years, people are, you know, more and more on their mobile devices, right? Um, data suggests that approximately 40 to 50% of your website visitors are coming from mobile devices. If you have analytics on your website, go and take a look. You can switch it up by device type and you'll see. Um, I would I would put money on that 40 to 50% of your traffic's coming from mobile devices. And honestly, it's only increasing over time as technology becomes more affordable and more available. So making sure that your website scales down to tablet as well as mobile devices and that it still works properly without any kind of sideways scrolling uh, is absolutely critical. Google will actually give you higher ranking if your site works better on mobile devices. And this type of thing is called responsive design. Anybody have any questions around, uh, around this? If you do, feel free to type it in chat. I hate when I go to a website and I'm scrolling down and then the page moves over a little. David, we are cursed today. You've gone on mute. I was muted. Okay. So where did you hear me last? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, you were just um, talking how you were against scrolling. Uh, I'm against sideways scrolling on mobile devices. 
right? You want to use your thumb and flick up or down, right? I hate when websites uh, kind of go sideways. So um, Google will use this mobile responsiveness as part of their ranking algorithm, uh, meaning that if your website works well on mobile, uh, then you'll end up ranking higher in Google search results. So by implementing these things that I just spoke about, you're gonna have a better looking website that works across devices, which is awesome. You're gonna have a website that matches and fits your brand's look and feel and really tells a story about what your organization does. And you're gonna spend more, you're gonna have more time because you'll be spending less effort working on your website and your digital marketing. Uh, so there's a question here from Kim. Uh, how do you feel about carousels or sliders on a homepage? Um, so I think that uh, carousels or sliders on a homepage are a good thing if you have a lot of stuff that you need to tell somebody. Having said that, most people won't see past the second slide. Well done, so that's something to, to take into consideration as well. Um, if somebody's really pushing you to have a slider on your homepage and you've already got four of them and they want a fifth one, um, I would try to push back uh, as much as you can, try to figure out what is the impetus behind them asking for it to be there uh, and how does it fit, honestly, um, objectively in your organization's mission, right? So you want to make sure that, that it's imperative to what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Uh, so that like kind of big section there, uh, what we're calling it in the last few years is a hero section. So you might have a video, you might have a picture, you might have a slider, kind of like a really big section at the top there. Um, okay, so uh, we talked about a uh, better looking website, matches your brand and spend less time because it, it does what it needs to do. And with that, you can actually spend less time by leveraging automation and system integration. So that's our uh, shift number two. Question for David. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. All right. So with the right tools, the right system, and the right results, it means that you can save time and focus on some of your other priorities. So there are tools like uh, Wix and Squarespace and WordPress. And within WordPress, you have Elementor and WP Bakery and Visual Builder. There's different systems like that. Uh, there's done-for-you platforms like Mighty NPO, which we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. Um, and in terms of tools, you know, how great would it be to have an integrated CRM donation and email platform into your site? Um, if you don't know what a CRM is, just type CRM in the chat and I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick little kind of run through as to what a, uh, a CRM is. Um, CRM. All right. Manisha. Awesome. All right. So a CRM, it's an acronym. It stands for Customer Relationship Management. And it's basically like a special tool that helps nonprofits keep track of all the important information that they have about the people that they help. So for example, if a nonprofit provides meals to people in need because, uh, sorry, yeah, if they provide meals to people in need, they might use a CRM to track the person's name, their contact information, and maybe the type of meals that they like to eat. Uh, so it helps the nonprofit really understand each person's preferences, and then you can use that information to provide better service to them. Uh, so think of a CRM like a big notebook or computer system that helps you keep all of your client information organized and in one place so that you can make better business decisions around what you can do to help service the people a little bit better. Um, so in my podcast, episode 15, uh, so I'll put a little link here. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Um, yeah, so episode 15, uh, I talk about the different page builders and differences between some of the major platforms. Um, so good things uh, in that episode. We've got a full transcription uh, on that page as well. Um, so wouldn't it be easy and wouldn't it be awesome if you can ease your mental... I said that really weird. <laughs> My apologies. Wouldn't it be awesome to ease your mental load, right? For me, I love to leverage tech as much as uh, I absolutely can because I don't want to use up my brain space for some stuff. For example, like all the meetings that I have in a day or, you know, some of my friends, I've got their phone numbers in my phone. I couldn't tell you what their number is uh, or their email addresses, right? So um, I use that to keep track of all of it. I've got it all in there. But what about copying and pasting names and emails from one system into another? 
right? There's an increased rate of error as well as the time needed when you want to rely on people to do that type of work. So automations can free up your time and eliminate the error provided the automations were set up properly and, and tested first. So there's some different systems. You can automate with IFTTT, with Zapier, with Make, which used to be called Integromat or in, uh, in, Integrately, uh, Pably, there's a number of them out there. You can integrate with email marketing systems like MailChimp or Constant Contact. You can bring in donation platforms like Kila or Raisley. Um, and then there's also done for you websites uh, like Mighty MPO um, as well. So uh, what I mean by the automation is let's say you have a, uh, a form on your site, a contact form, and you've got a little checkbox in that form that says like, keep me up to date with all the latest happenings or newsletters or whatever. When somebody submits that form, um, you can have that automatically put their information into MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever system that you're using uh, so that you don't have to then go once you get the email and then send that to the person who manages that system. And then you can like copy and paste it. But when you copy it, you accidentally miss the first character of the email address, right? Um, this will just data as data. It'll take it and put it directly in and eliminate any of that error. Um, so for example, Zapier works with over 5,000 different systems and apps to do integration. So imagine being able to automate processes between platforms that were never meant to actually speak to one another. Imagine posting content on your website. This is something that we, we do quite often for our clients. So you post something on your website and then it'll auto magically create a MailChimp campaign with that. It won't send it out. We never like to have anything automatically get sent out. We want a human to actually take a look at it, but you don't have to copy and paste and then grab your image and put it in. It just happens automatically within five to 10 minutes. Um, like how awesome would that be, right? That's a quick, easy win there. Uh, so you can leverage Zapier, a free account, and have that connected into your MailChimp if you're using WordPress or Drupal or whatever it happens to be. Um, so that's pretty easy to do. So these are solutions to make editing and maintenance and updates easier for non-technical people. With the right mix of tools and systems, you'll say goodbye to your content management headache. You'll be able to save three to five hours a month or more uh, so that you can maximize your productivity and get more done. Um, I wanna take a quick look at Banting and Best Diabetes Center at the University of Toronto. This is their old website, right? Ugh, you know, it, it makes me cringe every time I see this. Their homepage was crowded. It was a giant single image in the middle there and they couldn't update it because they didn't have the know-how or the software to even do that. Their site looked like a dumping ground for just anything and everything. There wasn't a visual hierarchy or logical organization of the content. The design of the site didn't match the faculty of medicine, which was a key priority for them. The site had three different backend administration panels for managing two different sets of profiles, and then the website itself. They didn't even have control over their social media or Google business page. So we consolidated all of that and made a single backend for them to manage everything. We integrated registration forms for member profiles and integrated a relevance-based site search function to help users find what they're looking for quickly and easily. By leveraging the Faculty of Medicine branding, we were able to create a visual hierarchy of information. We ran a training session with them with knowledge about best practices so they can continue promoting the great work that they do. And I've got <laughs> Manisha. Wow, indeed, for sure. Um, so I have one more shift that uh, I want to talk about today. But before I get to that, remember I said if you wanted help, I was going to give you a next step. Well, if what I've shown you today has inspired you, or if you think this applies to your organization, you're ready to get help, I'd love to see you take some kind of action today. So Wow Digital, we do website design and digital marketing for Canadian nonprofits, charities, and NGOs. We want to help you jumpstart your nonprofit strategy. And our Mission Accelerator program will allow you to get started and implement a new website that will engage the world. This is for any nonprofit or charity who's struggling with time and is looking to take their online presence to the next level. Uh, if you want to book a free call with me or my team, I'm going to drop a link right here in chat. WowDigital.com slash consult. There you go. Head over, book a call. Um, so let's say you had, all right, back to webinar mode. Here we go. All right, let's say you had your website redesigned and it looks and feels great. Your tools are sharp. They're doing wonders so you can manage your website smoothly as well as serving your visitors so they can get what they want from your website. By having all that, a lot of people would be like, yep, yeah, okay, we're done. We're good. We're set for success. We're on the way. But that's why I want to talk about this last shift. 
your website is not one and done. You need to have ongoing content and updates to your website. Aside from keeping visitors up to date and in the know, there are other benefits. You need to leverage Google in your favor and get people to take some kind of action. If you have analytics on your website, that's a great first step. Ask yourself this though, when's the last time you looked at the data, <laughs> right? Feel free to type it in chat. When's, when's the last time you looked at your data? Maybe you have it and you've never looked at it. Maybe you looked at it this morning. I don't know. Aaron, never, right? Right? It hurts. It really does hurt, right? You put so much time and effort and you just get really bogged down and busy. And it's like, I don't have the time to look at that. I know I need to. It's in the back of my mind, but I don't have the time. Yeah. So, um, Jason, yes, we work with nonprofits all over the world. Um, bulk of our clients are in Canada. So that's why we're like, yeah, we work with Canadian nonprofits. But yeah. Um, all right. So if you don't have analytics on your site, if you're looking for a free option, I highly recommend going and registering for Google Analytics. Um, and if you need, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer anybody that's here, uh, we'll set it up for you for free. And we'll get that connected on your site. Just reach out and we will uh, we'll do that for you. As a side note, if you do have Google Analytics on your site already, it's likely that it was set up a few years ago, which means you're using Universal Analytics 3. The problem with that is that in June, uh, sorry, July 1st, they're stopping data collection. So really what that means is if you haven't upgraded to Google Analytics 4, GA4, you're not going to get any new data. My recommendation is to get GA4 on your site now so that you have a number of months, five months. Um, is that right? Yeah, five months, four months. It's almost March 1st um, of data in there to compare back to. So they're not going to delete the Universal Analytics 3 data, but they're not going to collect any more there. So uh, important, make sure you update to GA4 or pick a, a different um, analytics platform. Uh, reviewing your data quarterly. I saw some people that were like, yeah, we looked at it two months ago. That's awesome. Um, I would say at minimum, take a look on a quarterly basis. Take a look at what people are looking for and how they're finding you. And this is going to empower you to make decisions on the type of content that helps to drive traffic to your website. And uh, Eli, uh, to your point, it's equally important to provide calls to action, CTAs on your website to motivate visitors to take action. Using analytics, you can see which CTA wording converts the best. And we're going to talk right now about why the content is so important and powerful. So I've redacted the organization. They're not a client of ours. I didn't want to call them out. Not really a nice thing to do. But this organization is a world-renowned uh, pediatric facility with over $200 million in annual revenue, just to give you an idea about the scale and size of this organization. Their website was redesigned, uh, but they didn't do proper planning and pay attention to their audience. Um, this is just public data that we were able to get, uh, to get on. Um, so the redesign launched in December, 2020 as indicated by the arrows on the charts here. Uh, so the chart on the, uh, left here is, um, SEO keywords that they're ranking for. And the chart on the right is their traffic. Um, so unfortunately, this organization, they misstepped on their launch and they didn't think about their content in the right way. Uh, the chart, um, all right, I mentioned those two charts already. Uh, so as you can see, their uh, ranked keywords over here dropped drastically and their organic traffic did too. The keywords dropped pretty much right away, but Google doesn't just drop the search results because maybe there's an error on the website or a server problem. They wait usually about six to eight weeks before things start to taper off. Um, and you can see what happened to their traffic, right? Almost dropped in half. Okay, so let's take a look at what this actually means in terms of, uh, of their data. So over the course of a five month period, they went from 235,000 uh, ranked keywords to just about 60,000. They lost 74.6% of their keywords. Just think about what kind of effect this would have on the number of people going to their website their potential donors, staff, or volunteers, right? Think about what this is doing to their donations and fundraising efforts. Uh, in episode six of my podcast, uh, I'll put a link here. There we go. Um, I answer what you should do 
to leverage your data when you go through a website redesign so you can determine what to do with your content. What do you do with your old content? What to think about with regards to your content as you go through a redesign. So head over there when you have a chance um, after the webinar, stay here, pay attention. Um, and uh, yeah, so speaking of content, we ran a workshop with uh, a small client of ours on the wall here behind me. Uh, if you can see my video, uh, you can see the board up here. Um, so we worked with them and created a 12 month content roadmap. Phase one is what they were doing before they worked with us. They were doing one blog article, maybe every eight weeks. They were getting about 230 to 250 unique organic visits a month. Uh, phase two, once we started working with them, that period was about a five month period. And we ramped up their articles to posting once every month. So we basically doubled the frequency. We almost doubled their traffic. So from 230, 250, we got to 375 to 400 uh, a month. And then phase three, uh, which is about four months um, and it's still ongoing, we ramped up and we were posting an article every week. There hasn't been a plateau yet. They're sitting at 1,452 unique organic visitors a month, which is more than triple in three months of effort. And over the entire span, just seven times their organic traffic in 10 months. I'm not talking about large articles either, right? I'm talking about like 500 to 600 words. Uh, these articles were based on their analytics. We were seeing what people were searching for, the popular pages and posts on their site and creating more content around those topics. So it's great that you have people coming to your site, but what do they do when they get there? Something called a CTA, okay? A call to action. And these are extremely important for your nonprofit because they instruct the user on what to do next, prompting them to take immediate action. Whether you want your user to read an article, make a donation, sign up to volunteer, or subscribe to an email list, you need to provoke this with a well-placed CTA. The easier you make it to take the next step, the more people will do so. So what I wanna do right now is challenge everybody, grab a piece of paper or a post-it note or make a note somewhere digitally. What I want everybody here to do or maybe somebody in your team to do is by next Tuesday, I want you to take a quick look at your analytics, take a look at like the top five pages of your site. And so do that by like the most views that, that it has, okay? And make those page have a clear and relevant CTA on them. And if it's done properly, if it resonates with the content that's on the page, then you're gonna start seeing results in just a few weeks. All right, now the other thing is, is you can't expect immediate results, but it does happen relatively quickly. By increasing your publishing on a consistent basis, you're gonna gain more search engine visibility. Google likes websites where there's new, fresh, relevant content. You're gonna get more people coming to your site just organically. And with the right calls to actions, you can increase engagement and ultimately get more donations, email subscribers, and all the other great benefits of a more recognizable brand. With an easy way to update your site, you'll free up time to focus on your other priorities. By posting new content, you're gonna increase your awareness and get more traffic. You're gonna have a, high, a website that highlights and showcases the importance of your organization. And what I wanna do is take a quick look at the International Federation on Aging. Uh, so here we have their before and after. The before could have totally been on one of those slides. It was bland, boring, didn't have impact. It was really text heavy. It looked like it came from the early 2000s. They were using a third-party platform. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit geeky here uh, with an API to pull content in, but they were doing it with an iframe and Google doesn't consider that their content. What we did is we rewrote all of that and brought it in uh, using their API. So Google was actually seeing uh, thousands and thousands of articles and profiles of researchers and education, educators and scientists as the actual content on the site. And that really gave their content a big boost. We replaced their clunky WordPress editor um, with our WoW editor that integrates directly in, making it easier and faster for them to manage their site and their content. So this is what the editor looks like. So this is a typical WordPress editor. I think uh, anybody here using WordPress is, uh, is familiar with this, but this is what we put in instead. So it's really easy to go and edit and make you know, number of different columns, different rows, you can have different widths, uh, all with a couple of clicks, no coding, no CSS needed for any of this. And by default, it makes your pages responsive. So it works uh, for mobile devices out of the box. 
Um, this is our feedback platform. It saves everybody a ton of time. It removes the headache of dealing with your agency. We all know how much it can, how much of a pain it can be. You take a screenshot, you send it to the agency. They don't understand. They send you a question back. You do it again and back and forth. And then you end up on a meeting and it's like three days later, right? And the issue still isn't resolved. Um, this just makes it really clear. It does screenshots and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and it just, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Um, and it makes it easy for, for us to remediate. So we're all about improving processes and making life easier for, for our clients and, and the nonprofits that we work with. So here's the truth. You don't need to be a million dollar organization to have a million dollar impact. You just have to make the right decisions that will help your organization get to the next level and commit to a better future. Do you want to stay the status quo? Or are you ready to take a step forward and level up your nonprofit? Ultimately, digital transformation starts with you. And one of the ways that you can do that is with Mighty MPO. So we all know the struggles of getting online and having a site that will meet the needs of your organization. It can be tough to find the time to work on your site, update, and make all the changes you need. And that's why I'm like super thrilled to talk to you about Mighty MPO. Uh, there's a low cost of entry. There's no long-term commitment. Uh, you can do month to month or you can prepay for the year. Um, there's no new tool to learn. This is a completely done for you service. You fill out a form, we take care of everything for you. We've got three templates and we've got three more that we're bringing online. And um, yeah, you pick which template, you pick the colors, we adjust it all, we'll swap out images, everything that's uh, for you. And best part of all this, if you're a registered nonprofit or charity, we've partnered with Raisley to include a donation, CRM and tax receipts out of the box with it. So how great does that sound? But get this, as a promotional launch offer, we're offering you our TechSoup community, a get online now offer, you get 75% off for a limited time. So the website, it's mightynpo.com. And when you go through the checkout, just enter TechSoup75. Um, so Miko asked, uh, does it offer membership sign up? So like having uh, a membership portal on the back end? So this is not uh, geared for like membership portals. We can certainly build that out through WOW Digital as like a, a traditional type of project. This is meant to get people um, online uh, quickly that um, that are starting up a nonprofit or don't have a lot of budget for, for web. Um, so this is where the pricing is. It's 397 and 497. There's some differences. All the details are on the website. I'm not going to kind of read through them all with you here. But with the 75% off, right, you're looking at 100 bucks to 125 bucks. Canadian. So here's the offer. I know there's like one or two people from the US or from Ireland here. Um, this is Canadian. If you're outside of Canada, it's the same money, but it's in US funds, right? So basically think of it as like you're in Canada. So you get, what is it? 34 or 35% off because our dollar kind of tanked the last uh, couple of weeks. But um, yeah, so, uh, so this is our monthly pricing and it gets even less expensive. Uh, so basically you pay for 11 months and you get 12 months of service if you prepay for the full year. Um, so happy to talk to anybody and walk them through uh, what the platform is. Um, awesome. So I'd love to open this up for, for questions. Lovely, well, thank you so much, David. Really appreciate you, you know, walking us through this and sort of introducing us to the service. So uh, we are short on time, let's do quick power questions. You're limited to, say, 25 seconds for a response. Question one from Quinson Chan. What would you say are the most common friction points to high conversion? Number of fields, terrible copy, UX, what do you think? So it depends on what you're trying to convert. If it's donation, what is the minimum information that you need to accept a donation? Name, credit card, done. An amount, obviously, right? Um, I guess name, email, credit card, like whatever the minimum is. I've seen some donation forms where they were asking for your address and your province and where you want it donated to and blah, 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 blah. And like they, I don't know, maybe they want your blood type also in the, in, the, <laughs> in those forms. Keep it simple. Keep less is more. Smart. Um, here's a question coming from Aaron. Like what are your, some of your favorite CRMs for nonprofits? I imagine you're going to start with Raisley. Yeah, so there's Raisley, um, there's Kila. Those are both really great. We're actually uh, Kila's first uh, internationally uh, recognized part, uh, agency partner. Um, so we, we love Kila, we love Raisley, 
Uh, they're both great platforms. There's, uh, if you're using WordPress, there's one called GiveWP. Uh, and GiveWP just integrates right in. Uh, there's another one called Simply K, which I think is based out of uh, BC, but I think they just renamed actually, just, uh, I forget what they're called. Um, there's also GiveCloud. And I've had some awesome conversations with the owner of GiveCloud. We had him recently on a podcast episode as well. So even if you don't want to use GiveCloud, if you're using Kila or whatever, um, listen to that episode. He's got some like really cool insights specifically around the question you just asked around uh, like how to convert easier with, right. uh, with forms. So there's a number of good options out there that you also sort of integrate with well. So here's a question from Sky. If I wanted to take the mighty NPO route and basically do a website overhaul together with Wow Digital, what kind of time frame are we talking about from starting a relationship to publishing a new thing? Are we talking days, weeks, months? So Mighty MPO is our quick to market website. Uh, so we're looking at like within a week, you'd be up and online with that. Um, if you wanted a more robust type of product through, uh, through Wow Digital, those projects tend to be uh, around three months. Great, that's really helpful, perfect. And yeah, here's another question from Lori. So one of this question is like, where does this data live? Some people, we need to have compliance issues around like Canadian servers and things like that. 100%. So our servers, we've got two servers. Actually, we have four servers, sorry. Three of them are in Toronto and one of them is in Montreal. Interesting. And so for those who are leaning more into the Canadian options, I think Kila is another interesting option because I know they're actually based here in Vancouver, Canada as well. And uh, yeah, and Miko, I think the answer to there, if you're looking to get more info on those more robust options is to head into the WOW Digital website. And we'll share that link in the email that's gonna come out by hopefully tomorrow at the latest. Yeah, Simply K is also based in Canada. I believe they're in Montreal. Nice. So with that, let me wrap this up. Um, David, super grateful for you coming and sharing your expertise with us today. Everyone else, there's going to be more links following. So, uh, you know, you'll have a good opportunity to follow up, get the resources, watch this video if you need to, share things with people. And of course, those audits are going to come as well. So if I could just take over the share screen, I'll just take us through the final little promos for upcoming events and off we go. Thank you, everybody, so much. Um, Love, love the comments that you're putting in here. Uh, if anything, just know, take one step forward, okay? Take one thing you've learned from today. Talk to somebody about it even. You never know where that's going to um, affect. Perfect. And so with this, let's wrap this up with a better promo. So we've got some plans and schemes for the next couple months. Um, we'll be back in a couple weeks or maybe just one week with the fundraising drivers that raise you more. So this will be a more development focused uh, event with another expert presenter. And then we're gonna come back in April with an event that doesn't explicitly lean into technology, but it's gonna be more about how do we at nonprofits work with and honor indigenous protocols and bring that into our work. So those will be some of our upcoming events. And I expect that quite soon for those in the lower mainland of British Columbia, we'll be able to announce our first experiment in returning to a live in-person event as well. So watch your email inbox and you'll get all those details coming at you soon. Finally, remember when I said you, I need your help? I do. We'd love for you to come in and be an event producer. If you've got an idea you want to bring, if there's a workshop, you would like to lead or you know someone who you think you can twist their arm to be that leader, reach out to us. We would love to expand the team so we can produce even more of these fun free events. And with that, thank you all so much for being part of it and giving us your time today. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you at a future event. So uh, Keely, let me actually just drop something right here into the chat. Here's my email address. And as much as I do want your ideas, oops, that did not work at all.
What I really am looking for is, is people who actually want to take and produce an event top to bottom. But of course, I'm always looking for good workshop suggestions as well. And I'll give people five more seconds just to pull things up from the chat and then I'll shut it all down for everyone. Again, David, thank you so much. Really grateful to have you here. And uh, I look forward to getting that blurb out to all the other attendees by tomorrow. Amazing. Ciao, see you all. Have a good one.